Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. That's Natasha. I'm Moshe. We're married. You know us. We're here with my my esteemed colleague. There we go. My there dear go. friend. Well, said so I, I thought it was like you start with friend. That's a lot. But. No, <laughs> I feel like that would be appropriate. I guess I told you guys friend. are friends. We're After dear all these friends, years, but dear, we dear we started as esteemed. No, we didn't start as esteemed colleagues. We did not. We started as um I don't I don't know what uh, rug rat. Man, these, no. no, you start from my perspective. Man, these young guys are exhausting. Oh, we started. <laughs> I started exhausting, Kamal. Wait, yeah. then we when became, I met Moshe, I thought he was exhausting. Yeah, it's but it, it was whole. It was the whole crew. It was the whole. They were my whole. Exhausting. My whole crew. It's yeah. Debbie Kamal Bell. Everybody, the the legendary, the Emmy award winning, yeah. the the uh, best selling author, the comedian. You can see the, him on What Would You Do well, on Hulu. By the way, the coolest. The coolest career move I perhaps, like there aren't a lot of career moves I see. I mean, I get jealous constantly of just like numbers of people in theaters. <laughs> but when I when it's something that, that is so cool that you're doing, what would you do? To me, I I, I like love it. I, I think it's, and in fact, I got a game for us. Okay. I got a what would you do game for us later. Great, great, great. But, um, but yeah, uh, when I started, I always, you were, I told you this in San Francisco. Yes. Kamal was like the guy. And and n- n- not only was he the guy, he was so. Fu- I remember when he agreed to do Brent Weinbach and I's smug shift, and I go, "We fu- we fucking got come out, we got come out." I couldn't believe it. See, you're oh, exhausting. That's so funny. No, I'm. I feel like I'm. Uh, I'm an obsequious and, and good man. No, that was by the time I got to that, I found them like I think I can. I think these young guys might know something. So I got over the exhausting after about a year. Or so yeah, I did too. I married him. I know. Well, <laughs> oh, to you're me, over it. We've never, the three of us never talked about this, but the fact that I met you in Montreal when mm-hmm. we did Montreal and then I knew him, it's just when you two got together, I was like, well, I know both those people have hung out with those people. I never would have, I never would have been like, Natasha, I have a guy for you. It never would have occurred to me. Oh, I wouldn't have been the guy? No. Oh, ouch, a little bit. I mean, take it how you want to. I just, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just remember when you two got together, I was like, I never, I mean, I'm not a person who's always thinking about who should be couples in my life, but it was just funny to me that hmm, I had, I had a very All the different specific, ways my life could have gone. Yeah. yeah, you could be with Kamal right now. Although you were married at the time in Montreal. So. I wasn't married, but I was, I was, it would have been was, a scandal. I was off the table. It would have yeah. been a scandal, no matter what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, but I could have introduced her to other bands area comedians i just feel bad that I who do you think she could have landed <laughs> oh man this is good ali wong ali wong i mean that would have been a great that would have been that would have been a good story been a real power couple um <laughs> <laughs> no Kamau. um uh to me you've always not only are you a brilliant comedian and just a brilliant person in general but uh, you've I, I don't know if I've ever fully told you this. Like, there was this conventional wisdom that the internet has shattered, but you shattered it before the conventional wisdom, which was if you're gonna make it, you have to leave the Bay Area. Like, mm-hmm. that's just the rule. Oh yeah, 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 you're, yeah, gonna, yeah. you're gonna stay in the Bay Area. You're gonna become uh, just a, a, a forgotten yeah. legend. You're and, a Wednesday off a Wednesday headliner. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and Kamal, somehow, I always really admired the fact that you loved the Bay mm-hmm. and you found a way to make a viable, like not just viable, but I would say thriving entertainment career happen from berkeley cal like how oakland and berkeley well Sa- i was in san francisco for a lot of it but then yeah later the east bay yeah, i just yeah. thought that was i thought that was very admirable i always i've always admired you in, I, in a number of ways i appreciate that because i i have to you know uh sincere motion is not the motion i'm used to oh right so like so but i, I can feel like if this is like fatherhood is doing this, I can, <laughs> <laughs> this is like, honestly come out it's podcasting no that's what's changed <laughs> it's it. yeah because i because I, I i mean we've always been friendly after I got over my thing and <laughs> like I'm going to own my thing. So like, but, but Moshe's always the guy who's like, yeah, like I remember when we were in the punchline, you're like, come on, you're like a, you're like ah, a this. scale of one to 10. You're like a six. I think I said seven. Okay. Maybe you did I think seven. I gave you a seven, but I did give myself an eight. That's what, that's where that I was, was like. the problem. I, 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 I see that. Yeah. And I mean, you know, now I'm a little gray, but back then I had some something. I don't know what it was, but I had something. But you I was guys like, rated each other. I didn't rate. I didn't ask for any of it. <laughs> you ever have this experience? And I'm trying to speaking of fatherhood. I'm trying to teach this to my daughter. Okay. I was telling her the other day. She said something nasty, mm-hmm. and I said to her, "Honey, you're funny, and with the with the with great power comes great responsibility. Yep. And when you're funny, you have to figure out." how to not go over the line because it's very easy to accidentally be hurtful. Mm -hmm. And I, I, this conversation I've never lived down. I thought we were like doing a roast (laughs) sesh 
And then the fourth year after the roast sesh that you brought up, I was like, okay, <laughs> I, I think I was that was a that was a, a tactical mistake in a friendship. <laughs> it just felt like why? Well, like, ah. Anyway, I'll get. I'm fine now, but at the time, well, you, not only are you fine now, you're foin now. Foin. I would consider you a nine point five. Well, you know, well, I'm in my zaddy era. So, yeah, you know, you're so. hard in the zaddy yeah, era. Yeah, yeah. Is Moshe a zaddy? I guess. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Moshe was a born, natural born zaddy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's always meant to be a zaddy. I By think. the way, I've gone down. Oh yeah, for sure. My number's gone down for sure as I've become more zaddy. I mean, I guess zaddy puts you into a different. You're in, you're like the seniors division. Like when you're <laughs> <laughs> it's like golf. It's like golf. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not playing against the the 21 year olds anymore. You're playing against other 45 year olds. By the way, it's it's palpable and and and. It's almost an invisible, I guess that is part of, this isn't really about you getting old, but because you weren't old when we met, you were older than us. Yeah. And not even by that much, but you were of a different co generation. comedy generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the thing, the other thing that I always thought was cool about Kamala, it's like, yeah, there was a group of Bay Area comedians that came in that were very like loud and noisy and splashy and like, we're going to change things around here. And the generation before that in San Francisco comedy was like, fuck these people. Yeah. Who do they think they are? They're yeah. coming in, they're stepping on our toes. Yeah. And come out, you were never really. I mean, maybe you felt I, it. I felt that way, and then at some point, when I saw the results, I was like, "Oh, they know something we don't know." And I was like, "I'm gonna go learn something. <laughs> I'm gonna go like." So I would like open for you and, and Brent because I was like, "I need to know what's happening over here because seven seven minutes in the back of the punchline on Sundays is not doing it for me." I don't know if I'd say you opened for us, but I would say that you. You la you 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 took whatever it was that that generation had the Ali Wongs and and and, yeah. and 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 found a way to like make this really interesting and I really uh, like think your career is so interesting I because a lot of it is you've stayed a comedian but you've also become this kind of cultural critic this kind of national cultural critic Emmy award three time Emmy award winning yes. national cultural critic do you I was curious do you feel like exhausted by being required to be wise. <laughs> <laughs> like when That's they call, funny. they go, you're like, the, you're wise, I, be wise. I, I, the thing that makes it me okay with being called to be wise is I often make fun of what I'm called for to be wise while they've called me to be wise. I'm like, so you want to hear from the college dropout about uh, housing equity? <laughs> okay, let's do it. Yeah. So, I mean, I literally did an event about housing equity the other night, and I'm sort of always in the position of like, it's not that I don't know anything about that. But I'm sitting next to the woman, Secretary Tamika Moss, who's in, who's been appointed by Gavin Newsom to be in charge of housing equity, and we're having a conversation about it. But that's the thing that. Can but do you have to like brush up? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I'm a, I'm a person who's like, let me like let me look into. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's what I. That's my I, my high school education got me that far. You'll you'll read up on a topic or yeah, listen I've, to a podcast or something. I mean, if let's be clear, if they ask me, if somebody's like, "Come talk about quantum physics," I'm gonna, I'm not gonna brush up on that. I'm gonna just be like, "Nah, I'm good." <laughs> like, I'm good. <laughs> like, but because of my career, I have like when I have done, especially in social issues or, or things about America generally, I've done enough work now that like, there's not too much you're gonna say to me about this country and inequity that I'm gonna be like, I've never heard of that. So, and even if I have heard of it, I know enough to know where my I don't. I really don't show up as the expert. I show up as the guy who's like, because I know a little bit, I can sort of make this information more palatable, and then I will lean into the expert. That's the job of the comedian. Yeah. To me, that is, I, I and I talk about it a little bit in the book. Like, it's not that comedians are the 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 brilliant thinker about any topic. They're yeah. the ones that take the brilliant thinker and make it stupid enough for the the even stupider yeah. to be able to go, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, that no, that makes sense. No, because now I get asked to do keynote speeches, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't that. do them? No, I will do the events, but I, what I will do is often turn them into what we call a fireside chat. Uh -huh. I get that you want me to be funny about a topic, and you want me to be, but I don't want to stand on stage for 45 minutes not doing stand-up, you know what I mean? Housing equity in America. What in is 1902. It? I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not. What's a keynote speak? Uh, what's your quote? No, you don't oh. have to answer that. But do, is, is, do keynote speakers get a lot of money? Yeah, I mean that's like the whole. I mean, what were what was like Mark Twain and Oscar Wilde doing on their American tours at the turn of the century? They I were kind of doing stuff like this. They right? were, yeah, they were basically doing. I mean, they were what we would call a one man show or stand up comedy. Yeah, it was all stand up comedy. But did they have different topics? I thought. Sure. Yeah. Especially Mark Twain. Yeah. 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 No, he was. I mean, he was a prolific writer and also a, apparently, from what I understand, 
an extemporaneous talker. So yeah, they would. I think he would probably. He probably had bits. He'd go into like he'd probably pull into town and be like, "What's the town you guys hate?" So I can make fun of it. He mm-hmm. right. <laughs> wanted a local reference. He probably, that's, I bet he, <laughs> that's so sad to think about Mark Twain desperately cl- like yeah, clawing for yeah. a local reference exactly. to open his set with. <laughs> <laughs> like you wrote Tom Sawyer yeah. and you're just trying to do a Bakersfield joke. Exactly. <laughs> At least we're not in Bakersfield. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, everybody <laughs> ashes their cigar. A lot of construction at the horse stables. All right, yeah. so what's it like? You're an extemporaneous talker, Moshe. I can be. Yeah, I used to yeah. actually be better at that. I used That's to be. Age. I used to be a, a wiser thing. When I was just in AA and not in comedy, mm. I I could like wax eloquent about any topic and make it profound. And I sharpened the comedy part of my brain so much that the profound part is <laughs> yeah, it just <laughs> fell apart completely. It's also age and pa- being a parent. It's yeah, there's that too. Things get softer. Um. Okay. What would you do? How, how'd you get the gig? And what is is it? Do you feel pressure? Are you are you feeling uncomfortable for the people that are in the? Well, if you haven't seen the show, what would you do? It basically puts people in a situation where they have to like call out racism in front of them, or sexism, or or somebody cheating, somebody stealing from a blind man, or yeah, or sometimes it's like they have to decide if they're going to help somebody who's in a bad situation. That's how I think about it. Sometimes it's like. Am I going to, I see this thing happening where this person needs help. Am I going to help this person? Right. Yeah, yeah. Those are my favorite ones. Do you feel discomfort when you're in the oh, booth? Yeah. I, first of all, I don't like, I just generally don't like prank shows of any kind. Right. It is a prank show. Yeah, you know, it's a prank. It's, it's I, an altruistic yeah. prank it's, show. It's, it's candid camera with a heart is how I described <laughs> it. Yeah, so, but like, I don't like, may, I get sort of nervous like when those things happen. Like, you know, like when people are like, what's happening? Why is it? Like, I get nervous for people. So when you watch the show, they have a camera on me. And people have commented that, like, I'm basically the audience. It's going like, ah, there was uh-huh. John Quinones is in the back, like, make them suffer more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make it more uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, uh, has anybody ever reacted negatively when you reveal? Oh, hilarious. Yeah. So we did one in, uh, so this, the cool thing about it, so how I got the gig was like, I just got a call. Like, I just got like, it was like, I didn't know that they were, I don't know if they did, they, they weren't auditioning, but I didn't know they were bringing it back. And I got a call that was like, would you would come out like to be on what would you do as a new guest correspondent? And they never had guest correspondents before. So I was like, and the funny thing was, you know, Hari. Yeah. Hari Kondabolu, great comedian, really good friend of mine. Uh, he uh, he always said to me, man, I hope one day I can host. What would you do? No. So, so I got to call him like, ha ha. <laughs> you know, what would you do? I got it. Um, so, yeah, I just got the call out of the blue. And I think it was because John had seen me on United States of America. And it's sort of. You could see how I could, it's adjacent, you know, talking to people spontaneously, navigating difficult situations. And then also because I was a comedian, I think they knew I could also bring humor to it. And then because they knew I was from Alabama, or my dad's from Alabama, and I spent a lot of time there, they had never gone to the South before. So our, my whole episode was filmed, or all my segments were filmed in Mobile, Alabama, in Florida, which was cool. So I got to like, so part of my nervousness was also like, come on, Alabama. Yeah, You don't yeah, look yeah. bad on TV. Wait, did they conduct the same experiment in... This is what you should do next season. Okay. Conduct the same experiment in Alabama and in California and see yeah. if, if they yeah. would do something differently, if there is a difference there's between a the difference South. Between, I mean, so... And and so you said people have people reacted poorly. And I don't... I think they used a small piece of this. So we did this whole segment about hair discrimination, which definitely they, they had... My segments were like, oh, yeah, so you're the black guy. Uh, so it was about this black woman who had beautiful hair and she's being interviewed in a like in a restaurant and this white woman's like you'd have to change your hair you'd have to change your hair that's your hair is just too messy which happens to black people black women all the time and then you get see what happens to the tables next to them and see if they like then basically like the white woman gets up goes to the bathroom do they talk to the black woman the black woman gets up goes to the bathroom do they talk to the white woman Uh uh-huh so we had this like table full of people and they were doing the thing and they went back and forth and then the white woman went up and went to the bathroom and the black woman was like, do you think I it should change my hair? And it was a table of white people. They're like, no, honey, I think your hair is beautiful, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. White woman comes back. Black woman goes to the bathroom. Table full of white people. If you wanted to change your hair, she should change your hair. You <laughs> same people? Same people. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Southern. So They're savvy. so polite and also racist yep, yep. at the same time. That's perfect. I don't think, I mean, yeah, it is. The hair look, is out of control. Doesn't that, look good to me. I don't know about that. <laughs> and I'm in the back like, oh, God, I got to go interrupt these people. I got to go say, ah. Oh, Jesus. And so they're like, okay, Kamau, break the scene. They're like, who's Kamau? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> John? Yeah, the Kamau left. So I walk out like, 
hey, you're with ABCs. What would you? And they're like, we don't want to talk to nobody. We're not signing anything. We're like, and I was just like, and then I just sort of, okay, bye. And I ran to the back. But did they end up signing? No, no, of course not. I think they left. Oh, yeah. man, we got to release that footage. The <laughs> Zaprooter tape. I felt I sort of felt bad for them because Mobile is it. It's a sm- I mean, it's smaller than Oakland, and it's also just southern and small. I'm like, people will definitely know who you are. Yeah, like it is not your. So if we if they put your face on TV, you're gonna be on the news. <laughs> like, you know, like it's- oh, I that- love I love that this has maybe happened to them before too. <laughs> they right. just knew to be like, nope. oh, no, no, we don't <laughs> sign NDAs. No, <laughs> no, 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 release forms, absolutely not. not no, 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 we knew not, this was what would you do? Not, yeah, we were we were happy to share our <laughs> ignorance. So. Uh, I yeah. think it's funny to not smell a rat though a little bit when you're at like a, a like a Bojangle steakhouse and there's like a job interview a racist job, job interview <laughs> happening and you're like why is this happening here? Well, sometimes you can see people be like you can see people's faces like is it like cuz what happens is like whatever the scenario is they will be like if if they're if they're not getting a reaction they'll have the actors like cuz they all have earwigs in they'll have the actors like turn it up a notch. Uh-huh. So the, so sometimes people have to turn up a lot and you can see people like what the fuck is happening like yeah. why 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 is this mom and daughter deciding to have a screaming match you know in the middle of this Bojangle steakhouse. So and you know and sometimes people don't react and sometimes people you can hear people talking to each other like is this real? Like you can hear people sort of having that discussion but People sort of like often will just keep going with it because nobody wants to like interrupt. And people cry sometimes. Yeah, that was great. I mean, not great, but yeah, like this. So the same thing happened. This hair discrimination one. There was this white mom and this her little. She had a little baby and her and her dad. And so here's the thing. I I just seeing white people interact about black people's hair. I was just like, oh, please mm-hmm. be some of the good whites. Uh, and <laughs> well, that's where you go. You go to Mobile to find the good whites. Well, that's what I was like. I was like, I know there's good whites here, but I don't know that these are them. <laughs> So I would just be like, so it's like a, it's like a white mom, the white baby, and it's just like, oh come on, and I think Alabama don't just come on Mobile. Also, I want to be able to go back to Mobile and visit my dad. I don't want to like expose Mobile. So, and this and this the the so the white lady gets into the bathroom. They go to the the mom goes to the black lady. Like, oh my god, this is so racist and so wrong. And blah, blah blah, it's horrible. And I really feel bad for you. And don't take it. The dad's like, don't take the job. Your hair is beautiful. They're being so like nice. And then, so then I come up and go, it's what would you do? And the mom starts crying. She's like, I was just thinking about my baby and I don't want there to be racism in the world. And yeah, and it was just like, this is, I mean, it was nice. It was like a nice, real human moment of the kind that I feel like you don't see on TV a lot. Yeah, know? that's really cool. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Uh, that was ter- that was facilitated by a prank. <laughs> like we, To get to real human moments, we have to facilitate, we have to have pranks. Uh, I went to the Reddit of what mm. would you do? Um, it's not oh, the show. No. What would you do? It's just Reddit's. What would you do? Oh, and I, I thought like, I thought I would. Uh, I went to the top comments, and I thought because you're an expert, yeah, we could go through some of the top rated. What would you do ifs? And okay. we'll see what a real expert, what yeah. a real expert would do. I'm a what would you doologist? What would you do if you could go back in time and talk to your past self for five minutes? Ooh. Go back in time and talk to my past self for five minutes. Uh, I always say this when people ask for advice, I would say to my past self, start sooner. Like, start, like, mm. stop waiting. I think I took a lot of time of, like, is this going to be okay? Am I going to be? Uh, just, just start moving. Like, just I like start, that. Yeah, just start. Whatever direction you think you want to go, just start doing it instead of, like, waiting for the right time. Yeah. What about you, Tosh? What would you, what would you tell little baby Tosh? Don't worry. I guess. Be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah. Bobby, Bob, McFerrin. Bobby McFerrin style. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Listen to more Bobby McFerrin. Yeah. By would the way, say, would you tell your past self, ask him out for some dating advice about San Mon- Montreal? <laughs> 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 I saw this one guy, Moshe Cash. Is anybody oh, else? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no, no. Avoid. Avoid. We got a lo- oh, no, got he it. got lucky. We know. No, he sure did. I did. I got lucky, but you know who else got lucky Ew. in this arrangement? You did, actually. <laughs> yeah, you tamed the wolf. Oh. <laughs> um, I tamed the eight, the seven. Is that what he was? Tamed, <laughs> it was I was an eight. He was an eight. I was an eight, <laughs> and that was the problem. I was like, we could both be whatever the same. But eight, okay, I what would I tell my past self if I could go back? If I could go back and talk to me, what would I tell? I would say worry less about what other people think of you. I mm. think and don't let that don't let that shape you. It's so funny because I just think of you as not being that person, but maybe I met you by the time you stopped thinking about that. Maybe, maybe so. Yeah. yeah, I think I would have I would have moved quicker in that way, like mm-hmm. you were saying. Mm-hmm. And is there anything else? I, I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I think I'm pretty happy with. It. I feel like I That's kind of. That's what I think about you. Moshe seems pretty happy with himself. <laughs> I feel like I well, kind of. Yeah. I kind of figured out what I needed to do and self corrected. Like I needed to kind of chill out. Mm-hmm. Did you have a moment come out where you were like, "This is me." I know, I know my meanness. Like, because yeah. I think of you that way. Like, you've always kind of known because your career 
and th- th- has always been very determined. It's like, this is the type of comedian I am. This is the type of career I want. Mm-hmm. Was there a moment where that shifted for you, or were you always kind of of that? No, no, no. I was finding out. I was, I, you know, I was just throwing spaghetti against the wall for a, probably the first 10 years of my career. Yeah. And probably around the time you came, I was like, okay, I think I'm starting. When did you, when did you come around? Oh, two, I believe is so, when yeah, I. So, yeah, like, oh, th- yeah. So that was around the time I was like, I, you know, starting to like, okay, I need to like focus. But it still took me several years to really figure out. But when I started doing the bell curve, which was the solo show that I was doing in theaters, I was like, I don't know if this is going to make me successful, but this is the best work I've ever done. And so I'm just going to keep doing it. Do you still care? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I care too much. That's the big problem. Yeah. I care too much. I don't mean about like society. I mean like about like the strive, the the struggle of m- make itness. Only because I have three kids. <laughs> like, right. You know, I think that I would. Yeah. If I was if I was a single person who was unmarried, I probably would be re- like some sort of like time to re- downshift into retirement. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, oh, but yeah, you're yeah. saying you care about the problems of society that you comment on more than ever. But, but yeah, I, mean, I also, feel it. I feel it. Kids yeah. in college. That's like, you know, three hundred thousand dollars a year. He has yeah. to like well, pay for too. college. I'm not paying for college. That's on them. <laughs> I'm get, I'm what would you, through, what would you do if your school. three daughters asked you for a college education? I, I would, would tell them to pay for it themselves. I would tell them like, hey. I, I paid you. for mine. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Good you luck. You can figure it out. What do you, what, what do you think? Is the future bleak, Kamal? <laughs> this is this is the question. Are you an optimist? I I I'm, people I am I'm an optimist if we do the work, but I I don't see I and I know people who are doing the work, so I can look at optimistic when I look at, optimistically when I look at them. But you know I'm not I I think this country is about to go through some shit. Yeah. What is quote the work? Uh, the work. That's funny. Um, so I did I did write a book called Do the Work. I think the work is really. Well, we don't want to do the work of reading the book. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just felt like I felt like I had to say that out loud. Is there a thirty second TikTok I can watch? <laughs> there is. Book remember, talk. It may be a minute. We, it may I was be a thinking minute. about that yesterday. When did we just all stop reading books? And when just we st- started wa- watching thirty second TikToks yeah. on books. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Remember books? Yeah. They had a lot of information. I'm still, a lot of books. I'm still reading own. books. What are you reading right now? I'm reading um, the marriage book. Oh, we're oh. reading. Yes, is that a, the name of the book? Or the Gottman just... book. It's called. Uh, what are they called? The seven. It's not the seven spiritual laws of success, but it's seven tips for making marriage work by Gottman. Wow, does that feel weird for you to see her? No, reading I'm it? reading it too. We're having okay. a lot of serious problems. Come out. <laughs> okay. No, no, we're doing it as a couple. Okay. We're reading this okay. book okay. together. I just thought she was like angrily reading it next to you in bed <laughs> while you're watching TikTok. No, but I am watch. I am reading it next to him in bed, and then I'm also reading a parenting book called Hunt Gather Parent, and then um, oh, you guys are in it. And I'm trying yeah, to read. So. I read the news because I don't have it on my phone, so I like to read like the New York Times and like like a physical copy of the New York Times. Yes. Wow. And then I like to have like a magazine called The Week, and I like to read I that. Got, I got that. I got you got to do The Week. But uh, but yes, like okay, the word in in like what is one thing? The work. The work. I'm sorry. Okay. The yeah. work. So the work is. I would say the work is making sure that you are connected to your community in a way that like when your community has a problem, you can help address that problem. Mm -hmm. Define community. This neighborhood you live in, like sort of like really focusing on like, this is the neighborhood I live in. What are the issues in this neighborhood? What can I do? Because I think sometimes we sort of think about like things that are far away from us or things that like, this person and go fund me blah 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 but i mean if if we all did this especially those of us who have a, some privilege or a pool and we all did this mm-hmm. around us we would like we would instantly strengthen the whole entire country are you all... saying we should let everyone on our block swim in our pool that yeah, does that's sound exactly like that's what, what you're saying. saying that's exactly what i'm saying i'm glad i'm glad the message got through i'm glad i was worried that i would be too obscure or high-minded with my wisdom i was worried my wisdom might not get through what if that what was I'm saying what your is, book was about was yeah. communal pools everybody let everybody swim in your pool um do you do that work Sure, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I, not. That wasn't a no. hey, prove it, motherfucker. I'm. Yeah. It sounds like actually like work. It sounds like so d- difficult so sh- to do that. No, I mean, so for me, like living in the East Bay, I'm very connected to East Bay activists, and I'm like Pastor Michael McBride, who runs the Way Christian Church and Live Free. So he is somebody who's like my conduit to the work in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. He's he does anti gun violence, uh, anti the gang violence work, and so I feel like with Pastor McMike. I'm just on call. Like I joke, I'm just on call. Like mm-hmm. whatever you need, retweet that, send that out. Can you come do this event? I try to do the events I can for him, and I'm also like regularly trying to 
read about my community and engage with the people in my community who I think are doing good work. Like in Oakland is also the anti-police terror project. I try to actively like promote support, do what I can and show up at events. Yeah. So, I mean, but I, when I say that, am I doing the work? I can always do more. So I'm not like, yes, I'm doing the work. Yeah, but fair enough. But it's it, 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 you can always do more is a lot better position to be in than what I think what most people are in. And I would probably include myself in this is I could probably do something and mm-hmm. and and don't. I would say the easiest way we can address this is Google whatever the name of this neighborhood is. Neighborhood is mutual aid in the name of this neighborhood mm. and or mutual aid Los Angeles and you and mutual aid. You know, what mutual aid is no. it's just organizations that are like. I know somebody who's I know somebody in, in my town who's hungry. I need fifty dollars, and you just hand them fifty dollars. That seems so, and possible. it's just it's just for your community, like you know what I mean. So it's like it really came out through COVID, like because a lot of people were struggling during COVID, and there was no social safety net. Like if you're if you're older people who are just stuck in their houses during COVID and can't get groceries or can't whatever and right. don't, aren't going on Amazon to order from Whole Foods. Mutual aid organizations are community organizations that are connected directly to the community and sort of skip the step of like. I'm going to donate to the Red Cross who will eventually get it to the right. community. So, Would you say it would be like the work if I found a person in my neighborhood that was hungry and I went to him and said, I can't feed you, but I can allow you a half an hour in my pool? <laughs> <laughs> so let's just say there's levels of work. Okay, there's uh, levels of work. <laughs> Much like I'm a 70 or a year and eight. That's a- <laughs> yeah, I'd say hungry guy gets to swim in the pool is like maybe a level one <laughs> okay, great. or probably level point five great. if the, we're really going to be. The yeah. only community yeah. event that I get is a newsletter from someone about how they're trying to stop the homeless encampment from like, you know, mm-hmm. oh, being, being, being built. built. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So I, but that's co- to that. That's community too. <laughs> so it's like, there's a lot. So I would say your community, like I always think of my community as being like my co- fellow comedians for some reason. Well, we have multiple communities. So right. like I think, but I'm talking about when I say in this context, I mean literally the community you live in and mm-hmm. who's around you. So like wherever that homeless encampment it may or may not be, there is some uh, some organization that is trying to help those people who are, who need to live there. Mm-hmm. So then you go to those people instead of going to the people who are like, we need to just set it on fire. Nope. You know, you go to the, yeah, unless that's your work. No, no but uh, <laughs> to, to Natasha's point, that is some people's work. I think sure. that is it. I mean, what you're talking about, by the way, it reminds me of this this idea of the uh, the Buddha of infinite compassion, mm-hmm. uh, like l- basically this idea that human beings naturally can empathize with like their family, their friends, maybe all the way out to their com- fellow comedians or their fellow <laughs> yeah, like yeah, their, yeah. their actual ideological peers. Yeah. But to open yourself up to the suffering of your even just your community, not the the world. You're already you're definitely yeah. overwhelmed, but even just your community, you start to go like, I can't. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. And so the the Buddha of infinite compassion I once heard about. I'm not like an expert on this at all, but yeah. is is the Buddha with like his arms kind of out? And the idea there, I guess, is that. The, that Buddha is like taking in the pain and suffering of, of the whole world or yeah. as large of a community as he can and attempting to help. And so that's kind of what you're talking about. It's like cracking your arms open just mm-hmm. a little bit f- past your own family and friends and circle. Yeah, and, and also really understanding that like the strength of your community strengthens you or the weakness of your community weakens you. And I think we can get caught up in like getting into our houses right. and sort of just shutting the door and firing up the like the devices and really like not even thinking about what's out there. And Pand- then we can get caught up in like not looking at it when we go past it or getting used to it. That's where those people live and da da da. Pandemic didn't help. No, it didn't. It actually, yeah, it hurt. And so that's why, but it's a great time, especially in 2024, I think we get so caught up in like the election the, that it's like, no, there's things we can do today because right. the election is going to be its own thing. And yeah. What about the community of our children's schools? For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like we all have multiple communities, some of them, were, but some of them are more obvious to us than others. So yeah. So I think if there's like ways to support your kid's schools, of course, like there's, or ways, to, but I think about this, people who don't have kids, what about supporting schools in your community, whether or not you have kids or not, because you want those kids to grow up and be smart people in your community yeah. and to thrive. And yeah, yeah. yeah that's because eventually you have to look across from that kid at a store and you're going to like, man, I wish this kid had learned math. Like, this is like, you know, so right. well, that kid will not have a job at a store because that will that's, be a robot. Well, yeah. that's again, that's uh, I'm, I'm talking about for the next three months while their job. <laughs> but, but, but honestly, what you're talking about, do I have faith in people doing the work? The only reason AI is a terrifying uh, specter, but I have so little faith in humanity that I'm like, at least there's a theoretical possibility that AI will 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 save us. I don't think we're going to save us. I feel like we won't save us. Uh, yeah, I, 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 when we say we, I think we have to really focus on the we of this country. I think is especially we that won't save us. Do you believe in the um, country? 
Uh, as in a genre of music? Yeah, do you believe in country? I do believe in country music. Do you believe in Beyonce's new album? I do believe in Beyonce's new album. That's a good good answer. No, yeah. I guess <laughs> the, the experiment of America, having, you know, focused so much your career and thought life on, like, race and class issues mm-hmm. and then also growing up in the South. And Do you believe in the American experiment? Do I believe? Do like, I believe is it something that you have a, 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 a like, a, a, a an emotional... C- attachment I've, to i've become less and less sort of uh uh tethered to the american experiment over the time over the time i've been doing this work so for example if we lived up to what those people said even if we just lived up to what those you know slave owners said even if we lived up to what the slave owners said we would be a better country than we are now uh-huh but then there was a bunch of things they didn't say that it's like we should be allowed to go oh they didn't mention gay people well of course oh they didn't mention migrants well of course you know so i believe in the principles of many of the principles of this country but i don't believe this country even started delivering they didn't start on the first foot of living up to it so for me like i was talking to a black person recently about like you know sort of the idea of like we should all just find countries where we can get passports just to be ready <laughs> like sure. you know uh-huh. just to sort of like i mean i've helped apply as refugees uh and and i was like and she was like but don't you believe uh, this is our country and i was like and i i, I, don't, I don't normally go here i was like this was never our country mm. our country so wh- why are we so wedded to the idea of like I'm I am fighting for it every day, but I think at some point if the shit totally hits the fan, I'm going to be like, you know, I can go fight somewhere else. You know, I don't think necessarily that like falling in love with the it's I think it's falling in love with the wrong parts of the with the wrong parts of humanity. Well, it's kind of what you're talking about is you believe in Oakland, but yeah. you might not believe in the you believe in the Oakland experiment, but you not know, in the American yeah. experiment. I yeah. really I really love what you're saying though because having a kid has made me like so focused on my family and then you look at like all these like evil people in the world are perceived as evil and you're like, well, I know they at least care about their families. So it's like how can you expand your love and actions just a little beyond your family yeah just a little bit just because because also remember because it's easy to love them and (laughs) one day your kid is going to be out there in whatever community you're in without you Mm -hmm. and you would like your kid to have the best shot out there you know and also we want to create i think we want to create more empathetic people i think Mm -hmm. that's the other thing because there's so many because these Mm -hmm. evil people that you're discussing are not are just caring about their families or or have defined their community in a very narrow Mm -hmm. way or a scarier thought I just watched this movie Justice at Nuremberg. You ever see it's an old 60s movie about these Nazi trials and it's like one of the main points they keep making is that a lot of the evil that occurred in Nazi Germany uh certainly the ideologues who were like let's get rid of the undesirables they were just doing this kind of pure race science thing. But a lot of the kind of banal evil was just people caring about their community Mm -hmm. this is for germany germany must thrive and they do these acts of great evil in the name of what they think of as like their community i'm even willing to overlook what the homeless newsletter well exactly (laughs) like that like that's the real the mind fuck of the thing is that the people you perceive of as evil actually think that they're doing that that they're doing right well they've been they've been convinced or they have bought into the idea that you know, I think the thing that the Republican Party is doing a good job of is defining Amer- God and countries being one. So if the country does it, then God wants to do it. Mm, and, if, mm-hmm. and, if, and anything that you sort of want to do, you can sort of put behind God. There's people who will just line up behind that idea. And that leads to disastrous results every time throughout the history of the planet. Yeah. You know? So I think that like the, by, fi- by defining your community in such a narrow way, anything outside of that, even if it doesn't affect you, is wrong. So like the whole like, you know, trans kids and playing sports even if you don't live in a community where trans kids are trying to play sports if that's outside of your what your community is then that's wrong even though it has nothing to do with you (laughs) you know yeah yeah okay here's another what would you do Uh, this is getting a little serious and i don't mean to make it more serious but the next one is if you started farting a continuous (laughs) fart how long would you wait until you called an ambulance (laughs) i would give it like Six minutes. Six minutes. That's a long. Maybe that's three. No, six three. Six minutes, honey. That's a long. I guess one. continuous is like. Is there? It never stops. It's one. It just one. So it's not like it's not like the fart where it's like it stops and starts. You're again. not farting. You okay. f- you are it's fart. fart. It's a, it's a, it's, you are fart. <laughs> yeah. You are fart. I am. I am fart. So it's just one. An so, ambulance. It won't stop. It, but it's a lot. The whole. It's. It won't stop. <sighs> You say call an ambulance, right? Not call a doctor. Or a mutual aid society. <laughs> <laughs> mutual aid. I can't stop farting. Hello? There's a man, there's Hello? A man in Oakland who's had a four-minute continuous fart. Put him in the pool. Yes. 
ah, you got there like a half second before me. Oh, sorry. Get him access to a pool. Uh, no, no, no. It was, we were both on the same. All right. Uh, I, I don't think six minutes isn't long enough. I think it would be like, I think it'd be a day. A day? <laughs> a 12 yeah. hour fart? Yeah. I feel like your family would call the ambulance before you. <laughs> I just feel like I'd be like, it's probably going to end soon. Uh, what would gonna, you, what, it could, but an ambulance is a serious thing. So I think if you said call the doctor. Go I'm, to the, go, okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Ambulance, I'm like, insurance. See, and, now we're back to your like woke progressivism. <laughs> exactly. And you're all, now you're making a commentary um, on the price of health care okay, in this yeah. country. And like, you're like, I would drive myself. Yeah, yeah I would just, I would just walk to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would, it would yeah, propel yeah, you yeah, forward, yeah. actually. Yeah. All right. All right, Mosh, we got my, some okay, callers fine. You waiting. Want to do some okay. calls? My do daughters it. would love that question. They would, oh, the, <laughs> that is a definitely a kid question. Yeah. Wait, okay, yes, we have to do some calls. I also want to do the other th thing that you just launched. Um, like I said, Kamal's a, a deep thinker and thinks about these issues in, in ways that I are Oh, very, yes, very, the sub stack. Can you just explain to me what a sub stack is? Uh, I mean, as I was trying to explain earlier, I was making it real complicated. It's a newsletter, but it's a place where where people you can post ideas thoughts content that is just for a dedicated group of people so instead of like putting it on twitter and having people going how could you talk about wednesday when it's tuesday around the world instead of like dealing with that but it's isn't that what more... instagram is with your friends no because it, your this, followers? the only people who can who can get you on substack are people who are absolutely subscribed to you and so for me it's a more dedicated focus group of people I see. than the random it's a way to share your thoughts without having to deal with the like the yeah. just the people that find it and then are coming there for no other reason. Just it's like find. Instagram with the comments off. Yeah, except or the comments are only the cool people. I you see. Know? Now I was saying when you announced this Substack, like I said, this is another thing that I admired you about. Every time like a person announces a big thing like that, like I am launching a newsletter, yeah. it reminds me of the person who goes like, I am quitting smoking or yeah, I'm yeah. going to the gym every day this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. When I saw you announce that, I go, I'm. I admire this because it requires Sounds you like to Sounds like work. Yes, yes and it, it requires work. you to work. write the fucking thing or yeah. you can't you don't want to be in the guy in 3 months it's like all right, you know the Substack that was that was a, that was a big and that's mistake. a lot. That's a big thing on Substack. But so it makes you challenge yourself. It sure. and I like writing, and I like writing about topical events. And it's, so it's I sort of look at it as like these thoughts wouldn't get out anywhere else because I'm not tweeting them anymore. So this is a good way to sort of challenge myself to be regularly engaged in conversation and to be creative at a time when like so much of my creativity is waiting for somebody to greenlight it. You mm -hmm. know? How, how go ahead. No, no more Twitter. I mean, I'm, I still have the account because I think that's important. I will send out things, but I'm not like, I mean, I was in. You know, I'm not, I'm um, not in. I was, it, it, Moshe was in. I'm out, too. I did, uh, it made it easy because the engagement yeah. went way down. The engagement, with, and yeah, and then also you'd have to like, it was also putting things before you like, I'm not following this person. I know. I don't, why would you think I want to know what this person thinks? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's annoying. What, so what's your work ethic? What are you, what are you doing? You doing a page a day? What do you, a page a week? Pa yeah. We, uh, I'm trying to do, sometimes I do two a week, but yeah, I'm trying to sort of on average a one a week. So, and I, and I've written some that have gotten a lot of good feedback. I wrote one about Tracy Chapman after the Grammys. And I was like, I never would have written this if not for this. If and you didn't have that thing in your mind saying, I must be disciplined and write this yeah. stuff. But Otherwise yeah. I would just be thinking thoughts. Tracy Chapman, right. she's pretty good. Well, I'm going to check out Substack and your Substack. Which who's is? with oh, me. Who's with me. Who's yeah. with me. Debbie Kamau Bell. He's with us. And he's yes. also with What Would You Do? And also, you're about to be with our callers. We have some people that are calling in for this this grand wisdom. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Would you say you have money to burn? Hell no. Not with those $30 salads out there. Food's expensive, inflation's up, and you're wasting money right now on stuff that you don't even use. I'm talking about subscriptions. Do you want to get some free money that belongs to you back? Go to Rocket Money. Don't put it off. This is the thing about these things. You don't even notice that you're spending the money. So the, the barrier to entry to stopping spending the money is just laziness. Rocket Money makes it easy. 75% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about. Is that you? Go to Rocket Money. They'll cancel your subscription for you. They'll help you make a budget. They will help you save money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app. This is an app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. There are over 5 million users that Rocket Money has helped, and they've saved them a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when they use all of the app's features. 
Are you subscribed to the Criterion Collection? Are you subscribed to Soothe Plus, where they send a <laughs> massage therapist to your house, but you don't even get the freaking massages anymore? Are you subscribed to the Discovery Channel? Are you subscribed to Amazon Prime? That one maybe you can keep because that actually is the only way to function in today's society. Are you subscribed to MadTV.org? Are you subscribed to... <laughs> <laughs> Are you subscribed to MailPodcastOnly.com? You got to check... Out rocket money. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Are you subscribed to brazzers.com? <laughs> BBWhunter.com? Are you subscribed to Pornhub? You porn. Get off! Stop paying these monthly fees. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Rocketmoney.com slash honeymoon. Uh, We're going to talk to Nicole in Arizona. Oh, and Kamal's been married a long time and has three daughters. Three daughters three so daughters. he knows. He knows. He knows. Really, things. no college. If no. You, if you got like a windfall and you had like like so okay. much okay, if I if I'm extra like, money or is it like a man? Tom Hanks dropped out of all the Toy Story franchises and now I'm the new voice of Woody. <laughs> <laughs> you call Hari? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey man, I'm in Toy Story now. <laughs> so that wasn't even my dream. <laughs> I don't know. I just <laughs> called to rub it in. Yes, yeah, so if it's like if 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 we have infinite money, that's different. Hello, Nicole. Oh, you're muted. You are muted. Hi. Hey, we can hear you. Hey, Nicole. It's Natasha Moshe and W. Kamal Bell. Gosh, hi, guys. I'm such a fan of all of yours. This is so cool. <laughs> it's cool for us, too. <laughs> What's up? How can we help? All right. So I thought of you guys first when this happened. But uh, I'm having like an uh, unhinged neighbor issue. Community. <laughs> yeah. Part of the community. Yeah, this is where your yeah. argument starts yeah. to fall apart. You meet your neighbor, yeah. you go, fuck this guy. Yeah. Then you at least know. <laughs> I'm going to drive to another town and do And you can organize the there. community against that person. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. That's what I need. <laughs> and that's what's happening. I live like in a, I live in Tucson in a downtown area that's like getting really gentrified. So I think this is part of it. You know how I know Tucson's getting gentrified? We were in Tucson. Like uh, eight years yeah, ago. Eight years ago on tour, and I, we were walking down the main street, and I was and 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 Natasha and I go, this would be a really good place to like buy an investment property, <laughs> or like it started to uh, something in our little white heart started to throb when we walked down that your downtown. It was like oh, I can see the, the the real estate potential in this community. So we could bulldoze that taqueria and turn it into <laughs> mixed use retail and housing. <laughs> So so I am not surprised to hear we that eight it. years later. We, we didn't do it, thank God. We called him out. He yeah, told us not to do it. But I, I'm not surprised to hear this. Yeah, Jaya and Keaton bought a house like next door to me and it's like sold it for like $4 million. Oh, so, perfect. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so. I, I got a great Diane Keaton story about the gentrification. I was at a show once and... Um, Moshe, don't tell this story. Why? Who does it throw under the bus? Diane Keaton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Solomon Giorgio had just gotten off stage wow. and Diane Keaton walked up to Baron Vaughn and goes, and goes, you were great. And he goes, I haven't gone oh, on yet. No. <laughs> All right. Are we can I have a Diane Keaton story similar to that. I was in a restaurant and she walked with me and said, you're great. But maybe she thought I was Solomon Giorgio. That's possible. She just is a huge Solomon Giorgio yeah, 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 fan yeah. with racial blindness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So, yes. Tucson neighbor. Okay. Tucson. Yeah. Okay. So, I've been here for like almost 10 years. <clears throat> it's a really cool house. I rent it. But it's always been like the house that entertains. So I have this like shed garage like structure in my backyard and we would hang out in there like during COVID and it was like a little bar hang out. Then it got filled with like crap and in the past like few months we like cleaned it out and it's like this cool like hangout space. Like I bought a pool table. I hate the sound of this. <laughs> well, just having a place where people come? I Because I can feel that someone's moved into the shed. Okay, go ahead. Oh God, no. Okay, good. No, no, no. I think they're having too much, I think they're having too much fun in the shed. Okay. Yeah. Like, Right. So, yeah. oh, okay. So, um, never had an issue though. Always been cool. We've had parties here, whatever. Always had a good relationship with my neighbors. The house next door to me is an Airbnb. So one night, and this is my fault. This is my bad. I feel like a jerk for this, but we, after the bars closed, we had people in from a, for a wedding. It's like 3 AM. We're hanging out. And all of a sudden, Rocks are being thrown. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. How else would you throw a rock? 
it was confusing and like embarrassing. And so everyone's like, eh, it's late anyways, gotta go, whatever. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. That's strange. It has to be this Airbnb. Like well, a neighbor would never do that. Mm -hmm. They would talk to me, right? Mm -hmm. So I forget about it. Three weeks goes by and I'm just literally in there with, so my house is a duplex with my neighbor who I share a wall with. We're hanging out. We're talking closely. Maybe there's low music on. It hits midnight and like a very loud rock again. And she was like, what is that? <laughs> like, it sounded like a gunshot. It was so loud. And I was like, ah, uh, yeah, the neighbor, um, the neighbor throws rocks. And she was like, okay. And immediately like goes out and it's like, hello? Like what's happening? And he screams at her. Like some of us had to fucking work in the morning, but we can't see him. And she's like, are we really being that loud? Like, I think we're allowed to talk inside of a structure on our property doesn't respond nothing and she's like super cool and mellow about it hello we know you're there man come on anything nothing like okay like fine wake up in the morning to a letter oh i love <laughs> oh, a yes yes I let's hear letter. it i love a letter hate the letter you want me to read it oh of yes, course <laughs> All right. I'm, just so you know, I'm already on this guy's side. Okay, so oh I'm hoping that the letter oh is going to somehow soften me to your position. Oh, my God. <laughs> I will say that night, it was very quiet. It, it would be like hanging out in your backyard with one person. That's what it was happening. I mean, obviously, it doesn't matter how loud it was. You don't go rock first. Yeah, I think that's one of the main first. rules in life. <laughs> start with, you start with paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have started with the letter. Or that's yelling. Paper. Yelling works. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fine. That's yeah. That's my issue. Is just the, I, I mean, that's like a weapon, right? Like what yeah. if it hits? Yes. Money, no, and weapon. and had you ever met these people before? No. Okay. I, didn't even, I don't even know that he's. I I didn't know I had a new name. So there's like a apartment on top of this Airbnb. I guess he's new. Got it. Uh, <clears throat> I've never met him. So this letter has some lies in it. Oh. Okay. We'll see. I tried asking y'all nicely to STFU. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like didn't spell it out. No, but, but it's yeah. also funny. Listen, I asked you nicely to shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, a, in, the, in a very I nice like, way. I like the use of y'all. Like, I asked y'all nicely to shut the fuck up. I asked y'all ni all nicely. He's like, I'm one of the good ones. I yeah. say y'all. Yeah, okay, yeah. go ahead. Sounds um, like you could so use some gentrification. No, it sounds like he is the gentrification. Yeah. He what, is. You knew. I've never met him. Did he and ask you? Lie. That's a lie. He never asked you nicely. No, never. There was no communication. I've never spoke to this person. Mm -hmm. He's never tried to speak to me. So, like, he's going to mention that a couple times. It okay. Never okay. <clears throat> a few weeks ago at three o'clock, that did not work until finally, after multiple small pebbles, a handful finally <laughs> got you to be quiet. <laughs> this, after five times asking, all caps, guys, please. It's 3.30 FFS. Fuck. Fuck. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. Yeah. Come out. You're in touch with I'm the youth. This. this is yeah, cool. Yeah. Oh, you got three teenage daughters. That's yeah, why. Yeah, Gen Z whisperer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only know about plots to Bluey episodes oh, at this no, point no. in my development. All right. Uh, now you want me to be polite? You stuck up bitches. Mm. See, I told you I'm on his side. Every yeah. single, <laughs> every single how's it going neighbor I sent your way. One of you was half decent enough to nod at me once. Oh you don't deserve cordiality or politeness from me. I tried. Keep fucking up my night's sleep. I'll keep fucking up your parties. Or just STFU by 12 a.m. It's not that fucking hard. XO your neighbor. And then he almost. XO. Misspelled... And then he almost what? Pieces. Misspelled neighbor. Uh, uh. Sure. <laughs> oh, and. Another no, uh, so throws the rocks, neighbor goes over, what's happening? Are we really that loud? Doesn't respond. Okay. And then turns on his car alarm. Mm. Oh, that'll make it quieter. That's right. a better solution than the rocks, honestly. <laughs> Does, he <laughs> like Does he own the place? Does he own the He's he does... not the Airbnb master. No. All right. No. Okay, interesting. Okay. What do you think, Kamal? What does she do? Oh, this. I mean, how long have you lived in your neighborhood? Or in this like place? nine years. Okay. okay. And you're sure he's new to the neighborhood? 
Oh, for sure. I used to know the girl who lived where he lives. Got She's it. Not got it. Anymore, apparently. I think, by the way, this is a Diane Keaton situation. I believe that this man thinks he has uh, talked to you before. I think he thinks he's had a conversation with you and he has had a conversation with somebody he, else. He's think, seen you and wants to fuck you. <laughs> that could be That's true. That's basically well. what's I'm, happened. I'm, if I had to choose one of these, I'd choose a second. <laughs> uh, I, if I, if there's only two choices about the truth. Yeah, yeah give a keynote speech yeah, on yeah. which. But I, I think what he's done is yelled and thinks that's like, and thinks that's talking to From him. his li- yeah. living room. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Uh-huh. That's once I've talked to her. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. And I was That's polite. twice I've talked and, to her. No, no, he said no. He, you know he said, please, please shut the fuck up. Please. So that's his core. Yeah, version. Yeah. Please shut the fuck up. You are That's never gonna time. see eye to eye with this guy. Yeah. No, no. No. I think it's a. I think public shaming is the only way to go here. Uh huh. Pass that. Le- get, make copies of that letter and pass it out to everyone. In the oh community. my god, are you serious? That's he war, makes though. a permanent enemy. <laughs> well, he's, he's, already, a permanent he's enemy. already a permanent enemy. But I think it's you know it's like about here's here's what's going on here. This problem with these people, they put this stuff on paper. What you, about contacting his his um his landlord? Ooh. Oh, that that's a good. permanent. Enemy. <laughs> no, you're right. That's a good oh, piece in the community. <laughs> well, I'm just saying you could let them know. I mean, he's he's being yeah. violent, so it's like I I. And it's hara- it's semi harassment. No, I think it's I. Th- I mean, it's funny. I rarely say this. I, yeah, I know you're gonna. You want me to say it for you? Yeah, come out. Come out. Can't bring himself to say this, but I'll say it for him. It is possible you need to call the police. I would definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely I as know. a, as a no. potential investor in your neighborhood's uh, real estate futures, I think law enforcement is a really good first. Thing. I mean, at the what, Rock. Well, hello. What race is your neighbor? Oh, white. Call the police. (laughs) Call the cops. Call the FBI. Call... Call the uh, Homeland Security. That's how big the rocks are. That whoa! Yeah, yeah, I yeah, love that he just leaders. says too. You know, and after after throwing three handfuls of, th- of of small pebbles, it's like you know that's how you get people off your property. One handful of big ones. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, yeah. he's got different levels. I mean, this is not how you communicate. And he's yeah. like, you stuck up bitches. I- what is he talking about? He's like, he's like, seems like kind of see like he's been stalking you or looking at you. Yeah. 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 You know, oh, and you're right. and and yeah. I and I just think you second answer. you might have to think about leaving. Unfortunately, unless you can like talk to his landlord, talk to the police. Yep, I and mean, maybe do a double call. Think of yourself as a really powerful man. One morning, wake up, make these two phone calls, take notes before you make the the phone calls, and just take action because your next step is finding a new place to live, and you like your house. So first, try to get him eliminated no a little bit from the neighborhood because fuck him. He doesn't own so the place. I don't think there's any like way to communicate with no. this person. No, 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 no. no, no. Rocks, because I, I no think- rocks. He yes. starts with rocks. You're right, Kamal. Yeah, that's he where he started. Stuck up, yeah. bitch. Yeah. Started. You yeah. lost me I at rocks. Don't think talk to me at all. No, I mean, and and I don't think you're safe talking to him. What Natasha said is right. The line in there that's the most disturbing is, "I've tried to talk to you and you uh, barely nodded at me." Like that's not. Yeah, we're not in the like you're keeping me up zone. We're in the like you're, why you're won't ignoring you? me as a man. Yes, yes. parasocial. Yeah. yeah, I have a whole thing in my head about our relationship that doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think why won't Taylor Swift look me in the yeah, eye? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think unfortunately, I, I straight up think you should leave. I. Like I think you can't. She fix- lo- she's got a fucking shed, man. I, I'm not she's saying got a party it's right. Shed. I'm saying you're living next. This is a psychopath, and w- like the great comedian, who was it? It was one of the blue collar guys. She's once got- said you can't fix crazy. Like this guy's nuts. And- no, but she could get him kicked out. But then he might come. That's stalking. I just I, I I as I've gotten older, uh, my tolerance Ooh, for yeah. dealing with uh with this kind of instability is like paper thin because I'm scared. Like mm-hmm. I, I just feel like. A guy like that, if you go rocks, and the rock to our listeners was the size of a golf ball. It was yeah, a, it was big a big fucking rock. rock. If you go, if you go, if you go, if oh, we can post, oh, we'll a, post picture. a picture of the rock. It, <laughs> if you go rock because you're being kept up, then the police get called. I feel like that's, I'm yeah, no, scared. You've, you've earned that. You've earned that visit. And you've also, that, what if know. he like knocks your teeth out or something? Right. No, I think it's. I think he's clearly. And he has a gun, obviously. <laughs> well, he just went all the way there. Uh, but <laughs> Everyone I mean, does. so I was, I was confused. Like how? I don't think he has a gun. <laughs> but like, I could have been anyone. Yeah. Right. Right. Thought, they might get shot. So yeah. it's weird that he wasn't thinking about 
I, you don't you don't think a you. man who calls girls stuck up bitches who he's never met doesn't have a gun? <laughs> no, I don't know. This guy seems like a wimp. I don't know. A wimp. They sell guns to wimps too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you he is he is he is escalated with violence. You don't want him to continue to escalate. So I think at the very least uh, I mean, I would either go to the police station yourself, like I wouldn't call, I would call or call the non-emergency line and just be like, because you have this. Piece I want to file a report because you, you have this yeah. piece of paper that that shows that he did this, that that shows he's admitting to throwing rocks. Oh, yeah. You have the perfect thing. Right. Oh, that is so paper true. Paper covers rock. <laughs> paper does cover rock. Yeah, it beats yeah, it every time. Yeah. I does think she give him, just practically speaking quickly, Kamel? Before we move on from that point, should she say let this guy know if it happens again? No, I'm no, doing no, this. No, no, no. no. So and she doesn't let him know she's going to the authorities. No, no, no. 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 Okay, I don't know. I mean, because I, I some sort of like on a pirate ship, you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just. <laughs> I don't want to start a war. Give me quarter. The war has begun. I don't like to start war or the exacerbate war. wars. I try to diffuse, 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 but. No, but I, I, I but hear you. I, I hear it from a from a from a woman's perspective. Having a violent man living next door and escalating is a scary prospect. But I don't see what your other option here is. I mean, I guess you could be silent and live no, in no, fear no, of your neighbor not, from now on. Yeah, I mean, that's an option. But no. it seems I feel like I'm that's not allowed to go outside. That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah, there's no, like, there's no like he's already inside. he's already gone to a place of like I'm not do I'm not behaving logically. Or responsibly, right. and I and can, I'm, and I'm behaving violently, and I can see you when you can't see me, right? Because you don't, you yeah. have never seen him, and he keeps saying he's talking to you and saying hi. I kind of like seen him pass by. That's how I know he's a white guy. But I, th- yeah, I mean, it's super like in passing through the gate, maybe like once. Yeah, I think Kamau's right. You go to the police station. I think that's mm-hmm. smart mm-hmm. with the letter and the rock, and and see, ask them, will you go pay this guy a visit? Because uh, like they need it, not a oh, nine one cool not a nine one one call, no, 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 but a like the police are gonna go to, go do a, a I check. I don't know. It's like knock knock knock. You calling the police on me now? Well, yes, I am. Yeah, and then you get <laughs> then you got to get a restraining order and do the whole thing. I mean, uh, I think your days are numbered. But also, here's the other thing: we don't know. They may be like, oh, we know that guy. Right? You're like you just don't totally. know. He may have a record. He may have. This may not be <laughs> the first time he's done this. So like you know. Put that white man in the system. Yeah, I think that that is your move. And do not communicate with this guy. No, no, no. Stop. Absolutely do not communicate with this guy. That's a scary, scary person. <laughs> yeah. That, that, right. That's a nightmare scary person. And also simultaneously, you know, maybe, maybe it is time to get rid of the roommates and the party shed. Maybe you're ready for the next phase of your life. I mean, you I never alive. know. I- Oh, you do? Place. Okay. I'm, but I wasn't, yeah, I mean. Like you honestly, could start looking for other places. One person, like one person hanging out with me. What's, you your, know what I mean? what's your pet uh, policy at the duplex? My, I'm allowed to have pets. I would suggest a pit bull, a uh, German <laughs> shepherd, or a uh, Rottweiler. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Or a really barky, uh, like tiny dog that sounds big. Yeah. Who's yeah. going to definitely not care if he gets rocks thrown at him. Yep. I would get I would get a dog. I think that's your that's a move too. This is I don't like the throwing this. Throwing thing is like yeah. and, and the reason why it's you're never gonna talk sense to him is because he thinks that's acceptable. Right. So yeah. it's it's just not worth talking yeah. to them. Yeah, the idea that he throws a golf ball sized rock and then you go have a chat with him and he goes, Thanks. I see where you're coming from. <laughs> like, it's, that, that ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> No, you should never have a conversation with this person. And I would also like, as I'm entering and leaving my house, I would have my phone out just ready to record or just any sort of like weirdness now because it's. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna get a camera facing that way. Yes, a hundred percent. I thought and you were gonna say a gun. I, was, <laughs> I think I'm gonna get a gun. Not the worst idea. <laughs> also, not the worst it's Arizona. Idea. It is here's, Arizona. Here's my move too. You take your cell phone, and when you leave your house, if you see him on the corner of your eye, you're like. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're just kind of like this bum, distracted yeah, yeah. woman who doesn't really know what's happening. Yeah, and it doesn't have time to stop and chat and yeah. make an eye contact. She, yeah, Natasha does that to Moshe around the house. That's uh-huh. true. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Sorry, Moshe. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could. On, and honestly, if you need any backup, let us know if there are any like really. Um, kind of attractive properties in the area that could use a little bit of sprucing up. Yeah, we wanted to start a Jamba Juice franchise. We'd love to flip an, uh, flip. Uh, oh, no, I want to I want to open up one of those blood clinics where you give people IVs. Oh, an oxygen. And, yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. I'm going to do want to bring those to um, to Tucson. Good luck. Be careful. I don't like this yeah. guy. I, I, yeah. I, I fear him. 
Yes, be careful. Okay, good All luck. Right. Nice talking to you, and keep partying. <laughs> Thank you so much. I thought the questions were going to be fun. We had to, <laughs> that one was scary. We had to call the cop. I mean, I think she should have called the police. Certainly. Yeah. I'm know. sorry. I hope we didn't disappoint, but I was entertained. No, it was it was entertained. <laughs> was God, I, that, well, that letter, was a hard one. That letter is. I mean, the letter is. Luckily, she has the letter, so there's no debate about whether or not this is a sane person. It's like you know. It's so funny how a uh, one little letter and one behavior. You go. Oh, I know that guy. Yeah. I know that guy yeah. exactly. I could picture him and every. I know who his favorite comedians are. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. what video games he plays. I know what podcasts he listens <laughs> to. <laughs> I got that yeah. guy. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, you spend a third of your life in bed. And when I'm in bed with you, it's a joyful experience. I love being in bed with you. Do you know why I love being in bed with you? Uh, let me guess. Because I sweat at night? It's because I'm sleeping on my Helix mattress. Oh, right. And you don't sweat anymore because of our Helix mattress. That's true. We got that little cooling pad. And we got it firm for my back. My back problems that I used to have, they've gone away since I started sleeping on Helix. People have come up to me in the wild and said, you do a lot of ads for Helix. Do you really love the mattress? I really love the mattress. If you go to helixsleep.com slash honeymoon and you put in the promo code HELIXPARTNER20, you're going to save 20% off your order and they'll give you some dang pillows but first take their sleep quiz find out how you sleep actually our daughter was telling me this last night she was like oh well i only sleep on my back yeah and i was like well sleep on your side she goes no i don't sleep on my side you sleep on your side yeah and i was like oh i never even realized she only sleeps on her back i only sleep on my side so there's actually mattresses that are made for the way you sleep how am i this old and i never knew that every i just thought like i slept in different ways but i've never slept on my back thanks to helix you know where you sleep and it's going to be the most comfortable sleep of your life. I can't guarantee it, but I can tell you that it is the most comfortable sleep of my life. Right now, Helix is offering, once again, 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash honeymoon and use the code HELIXPARTNER20. That's helixsleep.com slash honeymoon. HELIXPARTNER20 is the promo code. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long with Helix. Go to helixsleep.com slash honeymoon and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better, better sleep, sleep starts, starts now. now. All right, let's cleanse the palate with what our producer has said is not a more upbeat question. <laughs> um, let's call Christina right here in Los Angeles. Angeles. Sunny L.A. God, it's terrifying being a woman, huh? Mm. But it, you know what? I'd be terrified. Because then what are you going to do? Go across the street and fight the guy? Well, what would you do, Come out. What would you do? What would you do? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? I, I mean, I, I, it's funny. Just recently, we had a neighbor leave a letter mad at us, but it, was a, it, but it, wasn't, it wasn't threatening that, but it was super annoying. Yeah. Neighbors can really suck. This is the it, whole thing with community. It breaks down your whole thing. Community's annoying. Well, it's also like, <laughs> why would you expect to live next door to somebody where you share a wall and not hear them? I know. Like, that's the problem is that you think, I'm in my house. Hi, Christina. We see you. We're just, uh, we're, we're, we're decompressing on the last call. <laughs> I'll just say this. When I first moved into this neighborhood, I shared a wall with an old, like 70-year-old gay couple. Mm. And they asked me, and I was single. And we shared a bedroom wall, oh. and they asked me if I minded keeping it down after 7 p.m. Oh and I just said, God. I said, guys, no. Like, I'm, not, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, but no. Yeah, like, yeah. I think the valley might be the place for you. I'm sorry That's about the societal changes that have occurred around you while you've yeah. been in this neighborhood, but I think yeah, I, no, I'm not no. going to keep it down past 7. No, it's not no, going to no. happen. So, you live, yeah, you, you should have been more successful in your life. So you <laughs> and not shared a wall with yeah, me. Yeah, and it, so you can afford it at a property that is not connected to someone else's property. To a 20-year-old who's yeah. just moved to L.A. All right, Christina, how are you doing? How can we help you? I love your murals. Oh, thank you. It's Hi, so nice to meet you all. Nice to meet oh, you. Oh, it's Natasha, Moshe, and W. Kamau Bell. So great to meet you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're in L.A., so we feel like we can practically hear your voice from here, wherever you oh, are. good. I'm good at enunciating sometimes. Yes. <laughs> so what's going on? How, how can we help? Well, um, I wanted to know if you had any advice and insight on how to handle um, the impending divorce and current separation of a couple you're really good friends with. Um, it's unexpectedly really painful for me, but obviously it's worse for them. So I just wanted to know if you've gone through it. Like, like taking how sides? To, not, nece not necessarily taking sides, but like how to be a good friend while also giving them privacy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I on only one of them told me it's happening. So I haven't reached out to the other one. 
Um, so that's also part of the logistics here. Mm, mm, Do you have mm. a husband or a partner? No, I don't. I have a partner, but not a husband. Are they a pa- are they a friends mutually too? Mm-hmm. Yes. Are you are you stronger with one than the other? I'm I have a stronger relationship with the person who doesn't know that I know yet. Uh huh. Um, uh-huh. Got it. All right. I have a thought, but Kamal, what do you, do you? I mean, I've me, you know, please. Me and Melissa have been together for twenty years, so we know a lot of divorce couples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been to a lot of weddings that are now divorce couples. Oh, so, yeah. interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think that. Uh, so, how long did you have? It's this couple. So, have you known them both the same period of time? Yeah, I worked with the husband first, and then I met his wife pretty soon after. So, I've known them for about like four years now. And who's the one you're? Who's the one you're closer to? The husband. And that's the one who doesn't know that you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And how long have you had this secret information? Uh, Like two weeks, maybe. Oh, so it's starting to be a little weird. Yeah, I mean, I assume, like, he might know that I know, but I don't want to reach out just for, like, you know, privacy's sake. So I have no idea what he knows. Oh, privacy's gone out the window. Uh, So (laughs) I would say, tell the person who told you, look... I need to talk to, I need, I know, and I've known for two weeks, I can't just keep holding this information and ask them, does your, does this other person know that I know? So I can at least have an honest conversation with mm-hmm. them. You owe, well, privacy is like, you, you, since you've let me in on this little bubble of your, of your family, I need to know if the other person knows, cause that person knows you're closer with them. And I mm-hmm. can't, I can't keep like being around this person, not talking about this. So I think it's, and then if they go, no, I haven't told them, then you get to, then you get to say, well, you need to tell them. So I could, because it's not fair to me to have to hold this information. It's actually not. Yeah, fair. and don't yeah, meddle, like darling. Yeah, yeah. Don't meddle. <laughs> what do you mean? Like try to get them back together? Or don't, yeah, just like just you're just a rock. You're just there for them if yeah. they need you. You just kind of have to be the person who's uh, open and available, but also not like asking them questions. I don't think. I mean, I think you just have to kind of step back a little bit. I think and I'm not going to parent trap them or anything. I just want to be supportive. <laughs> I was just watching that movie. I did. I, 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 so, <laughs> what Kamal was saying is 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 right because the I and I think this is gendered actually. But I think everybody feels this, but I think men feel it a lot is shame when a when a marriage starts to fall apart. So it's possible that the reason he hasn't told you, even though he's closer, is he's like embarrassed mm-hmm. a, uh, uh, that he's a failure, uh, whether that's real or not. He, that's pro- maybe how he's feeling. And he probably would feel a great deal of relief if a friend reached out and said, hey, you don't have to talk about this if you don't want to, but I'm here for you. I know. And I just I know you're going through a hard time and I'm here for you if you need it. And to come out's point, like the person that told you, you, you have an inroad to just say, hey, I really want to reach out and be supportive to the to my friend but i just want to make sure that 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 all those lines of communication are open and then i bet you it would mean a great deal Mm -hmm. because i know when i'm in a in a position of like shame and not telling people things like just one person saying hey i i love you and i'm thinking of you is enough even if i don't want to talk to them it's just enough to know Mm -hmm. that somebody's kind of emotionally got my back i will say it's a little weird that the wife told you <clears throat> knowing that she knows that you're closer to her husband, that's a little weird to me. Well, people get I weird. Think, yeah. Yeah. It was just, I kept, we have a group message and I think Ooh. it got to the point where she's like, I need to tell you so that we don't keep talking on the group chat uh-huh. together. I uh-huh. think that's kind of why that happened. Oh, so it was more oh like okay. A that's clerical. fair. I need the group chat will be ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I don't. <laughs> In fact, it's ended already. I you, got you, the, you're the only person that doesn't yeah, yeah. know. Hey guys, did you, get, did you get that gif I sent? Get that gif? Nobody responded to that did gif. Anybody, is anybody watching Shogun? No. <laughs> I We're got the group chat show. and the divorce. Yeah, very funny. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I think you at this point it's been two weeks, so you have every right to go to your to the wife and be like, "Look, I got to talk to the, your host. I got to talk to your this person, you, because I can't just keep holding this information. It's not fair for me to hold this information." And maybe she's like, "Oh yeah, I told him two weeks ago," or maybe she's like, "You're right." And if she says you're wrong, I think then you get to go. Well, look, I'm going to talk to him about like I'm going to let him know I know. Also, it's not about you. They have so yeah. much stuff they're trying to work out logistically. Do they have kids? No, they okay. have a dog though. Mm. they're they're de- figuring out who's gonna get the dog it's like let them do their thing but your mm-hmm. advice to them should be don't share a dog <laughs> if they ask you and uh and, yeah and be available to be a friend to whoever wants to be your friend I yeah think that's the other thing because one of them may be like I, and then when you go out with these people i've been in this position 
if they talk about the thing, you talk about it. If they don't, you just, uh, you know, Dennis and Montage from an 80s movie about sisters <laughs> are doing it for themselves. No, but that's right. Right. Like a, you as, don't bring it up. But yeah, if yeah. they want it, that's what I mean. Like, don't meddle. As, pain, as yeah. painful as this is for you, like you're in a position to be of. And this is kind of the theme of this episode. You're in a position to be of service to both of these people. Like, you know, they both clearly uh, like love and trust you. The fact that the woman that you're less close with reached out to you, not. I think, yes, it was clerical, but part of it was also like, you're my friend. Like, you're in a position, even though it's a painful position, to be able to be supportive to both of these people. So that's, I think that's your, that's your, your, your role here is just reach out. Reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't want to meddle at all. So I wanted to make sure that was appropriate. I think so. All right. And, and don't, if you are going to have sex with him, oh, yeah, don't do it God, uh, no. anytime. Uh, two years. Two years. Yeah. We're going to say two years. years. That is kind of long, like huh? A long time. Yeah, that's off the table. Okay, all right. So three years, yeah. three years. I mean, things change. You know, eight, sevens become eight point five, <laughs> eights slip down a notch or two. Things change over time. So, all right. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Bye. Man, we helped a lot of people. That was two. Like, we helped two. Well, yeah, but no, you helped three me because okay. Kamal, I have to say, like, I feel so noble loving my family, and it's not enough. D- yes, I mean, I, and, you know, and the, I, but the I, other stuff takes work. Like everything you're saying sounds so annoying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like to I said, like Google mutual aid. Uh. <laughs> no, but <laughs> no, but honestly, to to Natasha's to to defend Natasha, the the bigger the biggest step. In that kind of uh, like being on the board of your association between zero and one. Yeah, it's yeah. like getting out of your inertia mm-hmm. and your selfishness of like just staying in your house. Yeah. That's the biggest hardest leap. And 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 yeah, just the the idea that you could just Google something that simple is a nice bite size way to get in touch with the community. So yeah, so and I would say like I think that you have to understand it's like working out, and I can and clearly uh, you all work out. So I would mm-hmm. say it's no different than like you don't have to start trying to do everything. You know, the first day of working out, I'm just going to walk for five minutes if you're going my approach to working out. And so I think that you have to understand that, like, you want to start to do something. And then hopefully over time, you'll build up, you'll start to, like, get in the groove of it. Or you'll find the thing that you're like, oh, I actually like doing this mm-hmm. part of the thing. I didn't know I would like doing this part of the thing. And now it's a thing I do because it is good for my community and I enjoy doing it. So right now I'm just doing this is a thing that I do and have done. And I'm Donors Choose. Do you know Donors Choose? Mm-hmm. Donors Choose is a website that helps public school teachers support uh their classrooms with class projects or even like hygiene things Mm -hmm. so right all you got to do to go to donors choose is you go to donors choose and this is now a commercial and like i can put in los angeles or california and you will find a public school in los angeles california that needs something Uh uh-huh so these are just people teachers that are saying my classroom needs blank yeah my classroom needs blank you know it's yeah. funny i i go to my kid goes to public school but like you know it's n- like a kind of a nice public school mm-hmm. and uh you know with like a high uh, nice meaning it gets a lot of money mm-hmm. and they'll put out an email saying that the teacher needs something and literally in two seconds it's bought. you can't get like, there quick enough <laughs> you, can't, <laughs> you, can't. You, can't, you can't do your good deed quick yeah, enough. yeah 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 <laughs> So it's so, that's such a great, you know, that's so go beyond even your school, go mm-hmm. beyond even things that help your family. So look, I'm going to show you, this is, a, a, this teacher wants reading materials for wow. her, for her classroom and she needs 43 bucks. I'm not, okay, I'm out. 43, that's a little bit of not <laughs> that's, that's awesome. No, but, she, so if you give, she's got three donors, she needs $43 so she can get her kids some books and it is an equity focused brown and black school. And all you, you just hit give. $43 and next thing you know it's done that te- that teacher and you're like and again everything can't be cured with money but this is like right a, but, I'm just right. Like but it, yes but because it, the actual like I have a friend who like always takes her kids to go make lunches for homeless people every mm-hmm. Friday that's what they do yeah. and it's like and it's like just part of their life and I and I always ask to come and she's like oh no we're they're full <laughs> right. no, but and you're like right. you know I mean I don't always ask to come but it's like you know it, how you need that's her thing yeah, like but, you need yeah. to find the thing that is your thing yeah and everything can't be cured with money but nothing can be cured with nothing, with nothing. if you don't do anything <laughs> nothing will change so I, I love that idea of finding a bite-sized uh version of getting involved that that speaks to you is it yeah. public school is it trans rights is it racial equity is it housing equity housing there everybody there's so many so much need in the world mm-hmm. that you can find a thing that will speak to your soul and i am going to commit to you come out 
that we're gonna we're gonna take a step towards okay. getting further in touch with our I community. Just, I just gave that class forty three dollars. Oh well, shit. fucking this is the problem. <laughs> All right, you try to do it. Oh, we were about to give the forty three dollars. No, 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 it's too late now. And now all the needs of LA public schools have been met. Yeah, that was that put LA over, <laughs> uh, over the top. I just, I just, yeah. We it just, is <laughs> so funny to me though. It'd be like you know, your teacher needs a new printer and like within five minutes I'm trying to give money and they're like, it's been paid for. Well, <laughs> like, I think just... to come to what, to do, what was it called? Donors give? Donors, Donors choose. choose. Donors choose. They're, you're getting in touch with schools that don't have like that. Don't have access to, uh, you know, the, 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 don't have access to parents who have disposable income. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's like, it just, like, I, I just think it's like a reframing of our minds, you right. know, like, like getting, just getting, I, I, I guess it, it's really, it, I've been thinking about it a lot lately and I don't know, and I feel so inert because I'm like, I cannot deal. <laughs> well, I think that that. I'm here with- to help you deal. I'm here. And you start, like I said, you start, you don't have to start with like, I think sometimes wh- white people get caught up in like, I'm going to improve my community. So I'm going to start a nonprofit, right. and a fundraiser. And then they get, they get into it. And one, they don't actually know who to talk to, to where to go, the, the money should go. Or two, they get exhausted by the like, oh my God, the gala and the mayor's not coming. It's and you're a- like. Just talk. Just Google mutual aid. And it's a lot like announcing a Substack. It is a lot like go, I can't do this. this. I can't do I'm not. It's but also you, like, what can you do beyond your family mm-hmm. that is not just doing work? Mm-hmm. You know that that or that's not bringing you money. Well, think, oh, what yeah, are you yeah, doing yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not bringing you money that outside about, of your family? That is about like because <laughs> again, it's like having a good community. It should be a selfish thing. Because mm-hmm. my community's better, it's better for me. It's better for my right. kid. Right. My kid it feels safer and knows everybody and and knows who's here and knows that oh, there's lots of different people live here and we're all fine. Then I go to I trust the neighbor and then they like do yeah. something. And then if that, and then if that neighbor <laughs> f- flips out, you can be like Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. Gone this. We talked Stop about the no throwing rocks. the rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's Kamal. I think that is what I. Uh, I, I, I know I keep throwing admiration at you, but but like, you know, the job of the comedian is to talk about the thing. Mm-hmm. And the job of the activist is to do the thing. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you've been able to combine those two things, mm-hmm. I mean, that to, to me, that is, it's admirable, but it's also like the reason that activists in every different field are so uh, useful in society is not just because they're doing stuff. Mm-hmm. It's because they help you kind of pop out of the inertia and, yeah. and, and say, this is, a, here's a bite-sized way. Like the fact that, donating $43 on some app is so there's so little barrier to entry on mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. It, it it just to be reminded of that is is useful and you've always put uh you've walked your talk and so I, I appreciate and that how do you, you find out about places like like donors choose I mean I I, I mean I feel like I'm just because of the place like well you know how I found out about it, actually funny enough Stephen Colbert have you ever done Colbert show mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They give you a gift certificate for donors choose. Oh, funny! And so it's been in your gift bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I threw that away. <laughs> Sorry. So Stephen Colbert, is, I, I think that's how I initially. I gave it to it. the cleaning lady. Yeah, yeah, but it's like what you're saying. Like you do one Google mutual aid, and then all of a sudden you're in a pipeline. Yeah. You're in some kind of like, okay, now I've helped this guy, but oh, oh, there's a new organization that wants this, and I really do think that it's the step from doing nothing to doing something that is the biggest step. And see, I sure. always think expanding my mind is enough but that's also mm. very uh very selfish well it's like what are you doing with that knowledge now that you've expanded your mind is right, the question. right. S- sitting sitting at your pool thinking mm. the thoughts <laughs> the, the, i really have figured out how to save the world yeah. <laughs> and it's so simple i feel better now that i've figured out how to save the whole planet splash but Any, I, anyway <laughs> but no, well, the, but the, the part that you're missing is the cynicism because right. i do feel so cynical about the world that's why i'm like I, I think, is it worth it? But I think that's what Kamau, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what Kamau saying why local stuff is so important because if you look at the world, it is impossible and it is easy to be cynical. And you look at the United States, you go, I can't help this. But you look at like, even if you look at LA, you right. go, I can't help LA, but you look at like, you know, Eastwood Public School <laughs> yes, in Pacoima, yeah. you go, yeah. well, I can buy 14 books. I yeah. think I can, yeah. I can do that. Yes. And the other thing I was thinking about is you were saying it's making your, your community safer and better for your kid. But it's also making your kid 
theoretically a better person for whatever community they eventually enter it's not just it can be selfish because it'll turn our kid into a cooler person yeah as we were talking about earlier like none of us want to raise especially raising girls you don't want to raise mean girls Mm -hmm. and so if your kids start to see you doing these things which i know happens for my kids Mm -hmm. they start to go oh this world is bigger than i really know not everybody has access to everything they need and oh you know i am so overly nice to waiters to try to model that to my child that i'm probably like going (laughs) over the top we've done our first step come out that's the part of the work we're we're polite Again, to we were point five before now we're at point seven. We're we're on our way to one. That's the name of the book I'm writing. On, on, way on the way one. to one. Honestly, yeah. not the worst title. Yeah, yeah. Uh, w. Kamel Bell. A, a Check out his Substack. Brilliant Who's with thinker, me? performer, comedian, hilarious. See him on What Would You Do? Go to Substack. It's called again. Uh, Who's with me? Who's with me? W. Kamel Bell. Uh, if you'd like to leave a. Uh, voicemail for us with a secret. Give us a call two one three two 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 eight six zero eight. Also, you can give us give us an email. That's how yeah, give I, us that's one. how you say it. Endless honeymoon pod at gmail. Yeah, find us on Instagram. Be a part of our Patreon. Come see us at our live show May fourth in Netflix as uh, uh in L A as part of the Netflix as a joke festival. And you can email us to be on the show and get live advice and you get in free if that's mm. the case. We'll have celebrity guests and all that other good stuff. Kamal, always great to see you. Thank Kamal, you. you're so amazing. I've, I, I am, I'm no longer an esteemed peer. I'm now your friend. <laughs> you are my friend. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs>